What's good, Lunatics? It is time once again for another episode of What's on My Nintendo Switch, where I share with you guys all of the latest games I've added to my Nintendo Switch collection. Now, this is on top of all of the other games I've talked about in previous What's on My Nintendo Switch videos. You can check that out in the cards or the link in the description down below. I think I got some heavy hitters this time around, and I'm always open to your guys' suggestions, so definitely let me know in the comments below what games you think I should be playing on my Nintendo Switch. That's like my question of the day, and always specifically indie games. Let me know what indie games you think I should be checking out because I often miss or overlook them and they are often very very good and I just don't know about them oh yeah make sure you back smack that like button it of course helps the YouTube algorithm helps this video reach more people more people who may be interested in it which of course helps this channel grow and if you haven't done it already make sure to subscribe down below and hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload you'll notice that I've kind of been switching up how I purchase games on the Nintendo switch it's no longer about collecting every Nintendo switch game note to Man, at least not right now right now the focus is collecting all of the games that I find really really interesting or that you guys suggest to me that I find really really interesting and because of that I've actually sold off about half of my Nintendo switch collection you can see it right over my shoulder it used to be a lot more than that and whenever I'm selling my games 90% of the time I'm using this app called Mercari it is my favorite selling app right now they're not sponsoring this video whatsoever but what I like about Mercari is the fact that they're very straightforward with their pricing and how much you're getting for every Every game or item that you sell on the platform you get paid when a person receives their game and that could sit inside your credit balance on Mercari or you can transfer that over to your bank if you'd like to and if you've never used Mercari before I do have a link in the description below for a free $10 credit yes it's a free $10 and there are hundreds of games you can buy for under $10 on Mercari with free shipping basically you're getting a whole free game at the cost of literally nothing to you if you have some games you want to get rid of don't give it to GameStop for pennies on the dollar I've personally sold over a hundred different games products and items and whatnot and I've made over five thousand dollars on the app so I would have recommended it if I didn't use it and if I didn't love the app myself if you want to check out my store and the things that I'm selling currently there's also a link below the free ten dollar credit as well and so the first game I'm going to talk about here today was actually recommended by one of you guys shout out to beef boy he recommended to me uncanny valley and I gotta say, it's actually pretty good. It's a survival horror type game. We're exploring this isolated facility and trying to solve a bunch of mysteries. But the choices you make have different consequences that will end up determining your fate and whatnot. And you can play the game a bunch of different times to unlock different secrets about the Uncanny Valley. And you play as this security guard named Tom who's on his night shift and explores the offices and different corridors of the facility. And rather than you like dying every time you fail, Uncanny Valley has what they call this consequence system. So for example, you may end up with a broken arm, which will you know inhibit you from like using a weapon and whatnot. Not. It also impacts the story and of course your gameplay because you have to rethink your approach to certain situations. So definitely a game I recommend checking out. Shouts out to Mr. Beef Boy for the recommendation. Appreciate it. Another game I added to my Nintendo Switch collection is Ring Fit Adventure. Now this actually turned out to be a lot better than I thought it would be. It's basically an exercising RPG and they give you two different accessories. The ring con which you hold and put your joy con into and you got this leg strap that wraps around your leg where you put the other joy con. The main mode has you playing in this turn based RPG where your movements and attacks happen by you actually performing physical activities using the ring con and the leg strap. You can adjust like the intensity level just in case you're not that fit. But outside of the main mode, you also have a bunch of general guided fitness routines and party style games. It really is a comprehensive like exercise game. If you've ever played Wii Fit on the original Wii, this pretty much takes that concept and dials it up a few notches. I think this is a way more robust experience and I can see there being numerous installments of this game, hopefully with added features like co-op workouts and maybe integrating some of Nintendo's characters, you know, some of their franchises. But I've been enjoying it and honestly, you can get yourself a good workout in. I also added Freedom Finger to my Nintendo Switch collection. This is actually sent to me by my homies over at Super Rare Games and it's all right. It's a shooter that has you blasting, punching, and smashing your way through about 37 different levels it's got a dope soundtrack it pretty much takes the classic side scrolling shooter gameplay and blends it with like melee combat you punch toss and smash enemies you got a unique grab attack which allows you to capture enemies and use them as a shield or use their guns against them of course each of the different worlds have new enemies different power-ups and challenges there's a few difficulty settings as well and it can actually get really really tough and yes in freedom figure the hand is has its middle finger up but there's like a safer work mode where you can censor out that middle finger it's not gonna win any uh game of the year awards 
<laughs> but you know, it's it's fun. It is what it is. Thanks, Super Rare Games, for the free game. I appreciate it. I also had to add to my Nintendo Switch Pokemon Sword and Shield. There's no way I wasn't getting these games. Of course, there are mixed feelings among people in the Nintendo Pokemon community about Pokemon Sword and Shield, and I get it. I agree in many aspects, but we all know about Pokemon. It's the first in the eighth generation of Pokemon. Like in the past games, you journey as a Pokemon trainer. This time, you're in the Gala region, which is based on Great Britain, and your goal is to defeat the undefeated Pokemon League champion, Leon. Sword and Shield brings 81 new Pokemon and 13 regional variants of pre-existing Pokemon. You aren't able to get the full Pokedex like you have been in pretty much every other version of Pokemon, which really sucks, honestly. But you got new features like Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing, which increases the size of certain Pokemon and can also change their forms. To me, it feels like a gimmick, kind of like the Z moves. I'm not really a big fan of the tacked on gimmicks, but it is what it is. You also have this new open wild area that has like ever-changing weather and it's basically a large open world where you can participate in raids and capture different Pokemon and they roam around in the overworld like they did in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee and what Pokemon appears changes based on the environment and the weather and whatnot. It's honestly not the true home console Pokemon that I've always dreamed of. I think visually it looks it looks pretty cool. I like the open world aspect. I wish that it was expounded upon even further and the whole world was open and of course you know I wish all of the Pokemon were available to play with but for what it is it's pretty decent. It's fine. Honestly because of the nostalgia I think I actually prefer let's go Pikachu and Eevee just because of the nostalgia aspect it is what it is some people love it some people hate it some people are like me and it's like whatever let me know what you guys think I also added this game called Puzzlement to my Nintendo Switch and this is like a minimalistic indie puzzle game that has you walking and jumping between different services the goal is pretty straightforward to collect all the red squares but it can get tricky at times you've got 50 levels to conquer and it's just a great way to just wind down it's not too complex it's pretty cheap it's a nice little relaxing game Game, you know what I'm saying? And I also added Aladdin and the Lion King to my Nintendo Switch. These, of course, are two classic Disney platforming games from the 90s. They re-released them together with a bunch of new features, enhancements, game modes, and display options, plus multiple versions of the games. I'm talking console and handheld versions for both. In Aladdin, you join Abu and you travel across Agrabah, the Marketplace, the Cave of Wonders, and more to defeat Jafar and rescue Jasmine, jumping, fighting, riding your magic carpet, and collecting gems along the way. And the Lion King has you battle through 10 levels progressing through Simba's maturity to claim his place as the king. These games are as hard as they have ever been but thankfully this time around you have a rewind feature which allows you to rewind pretty much at any point during your gameplay and retry whenever you fail which will be a lot especially with the Lion King. I remember the frustrating time I had as a kid playing the Lion King and feeling like maybe I'm just not good at games. The games were just mind-numbingly difficult. It's, it's toss your controller at the screen annoying and thankfully we have that rewind feature which we did not have in the 90s i definitely recommend them though they're pretty fun if you're a fan of the nostalgia if you played the games in the 90s and you want to relive that I, I think it's worth picking up and of course links to this game and all of the games i talk about are down in the description below and of course on halloween i picked up luigi's mansion 3 and it's a fantastic game where you take the role of luigi who has to explore this haunted high-rise hotel and rescue his friends after the group are tricked into visiting by an old enemy of theirs it includes some new features with some returning gameplay elements including new moves for ghost catching you got this doppelganger called guiji who helps you solve puzzles and you've got multiplayer for both co-op and competitive gaming. You capture ghosts in this huge hotel in the same way you did as the older games. Stun the ghosts with Luigi's flashlight and then you snag them up with the poltergeist and drain their health down to zero to capture them. One of the most beautiful games on the Nintendo Switch hands down. Definitely a must have in my opinion. If you own a Switch, get this game. It should be in your collection. And if you're into sports games and lighthearted sports games, I definitely recommend Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games 2020. This is the sixth Mario game in the series and it's the first one since 2016's real games. They actually never created one for the 2018 Winter Olympic Games. Like in the previous Mario and Sonic titles, you got a cast of characters from Nintendo Super Mario series and Sega's Sonic the Hedgehog series. You compete at a number of different events based on sports from the Olympic Games, of course, including boxing, soccer, swimming, and gymnastics, along with a few new ones like karate and skateboarding, sports climbing, and surfing. The game supports a bunch of different controller configurations. You've also got split screen, local multiplayer, and online play as well. There's also like this 2D mode too, which features 8-bit and 16-bit styles for Mario and Sonic. Another fun game to play with multiple people. The different games aren't as in-depth as they could be, but you know, I understand you're trying to pack in all of these different types of games into one game. It could be hard to really go in-depth with each and every single one, but by playing this game, it's made me really, really want a 
Super Mario themed skateboarding game. If we can get like a Super Mario skateboarding game with like Tony Hawk pro skater controls, that would be really, really dope. What do you guys think? And if you wanna know like what are the best games that released in 2019, check out this video right next to me. I go in depth with what I think are the best games. And then there's this other video that YouTube recommends because they think you'd like it. And I think you probably will. And remember to stay crazy.